Rosacea is a very challenging condition. Now, I come from the philosophy that uh, most skin conditions are a reflection of something going on internally and personally my belief is that rosacea is based on a digestive condition and not really based on anything in the skin itself. Now that doesn't mean that the skin is not struggling and there's absolutely a ton of inflammation that uh, goes on in the skin. In fact that inflammation creates all kinds of havoc. For example some people develop acne, others have excessive oil production, others are excessively dry, uh, but for the most part we're all struggling with the same issue and that is that we have uh, prolonged redness in the skin with a propensity or a, a likelihood of, of developing what a layperson might call broken capillaries in the face um, and that then leads to uh, a worsening of the condition and then scar tissue develops and that scar tissue is called Fima. So with our approach to rosacea, we try to address all of these issues at the same time. You see, if the condition is an internal condition and we are treating the skin in such a way that we are trying to restore its health, then we need to focus more on, of course, inflammation, which a lot of people do. That's, that's not an unusual approach. And we use something called willow bark extract as a powerful anti-inflammatory for the skin. And we'll use it with many other uh, Ayurvedic and natural herbs in order to create a well-rounded approach to the anti-inflammatory aspect of the skin because you would never want to use a steroid on the skin of course because that will thin it even further. In addition to using that, we use things that actually stimulate the production of collagen and elastin. Now, why do you need collagen and elastin? Because as I identified, when you have rosacea, you are progressively thinning the skin and that progression leads to an increase in the visibility of broken capillaries, or as we call them in the medical field, telangiectasias. Now, are these really broken capillaries? In fact, they are not. Um, they are simply revealed capillaries. What I'm trying to say here is that the blood supply in the dermis is critical to the health of your skin. In fact, it feeds your epidermis, it feeds your dermis, and it keeps them running. If you didn't have substantial blood supply in your skin, your skin would thin dramatically and look much worse than it actually does. So that blood supply is important. And what most people look at when they look at these blood vessels on their face is they look at it as if it's um, something that's out of control, that is, um, uh, that is actually not good for the skin. When in fact, the blood vessels are simply revealing a very uh, stark reality. And that is that the dermis thins and reveals them. You see, as we get older, all of us, whether we have rosacea or not, our dermis, which is the second layer down from our epidermis uh, in the skin, continues to thin on a rate of about 1% a year for most people. For rosacea sufferers, it's probably faster than that. And so as our dermis thins, it continually removes tissue that was covering our blood vessels. And the thinner it gets, the more blood vessels are revealed. So I, the idea is not to get rid of the blood vessels because again those are what feed and keep our skin healthy but rather to cover them back up again and that's why you need collagen and elastin stimulators and in order to do that you need to stim stimulate a cell in the skin called a fibroblast and we do this with several ingredients and uh, you can turn to our uh, discussion on calm which is our rosacea serum for more information on that. Now the second aspect of rosacea that we deal with is the scarring. You see, when anywhere in your body, if you have chronic inflammation, your body will begin to scar. And in rosacea, that scarring is called phyma. You might be familiar with it in, in say, uh, the movie star W.C. Fields. He had rhinophyma, which caused his nose, nose to become more and more bulbous. Well, that's a buildup of scar tissue under the skin, and it is actually a, a serious concern for most people. So we try to address scar tissue with an ingredient called 1,3-beta-glucan that you'll hear about in other uh, lectures, and it's a wonderful ingredient for increasing something called a macrophage, which is a scavenger of scar tissue in our skin. Of course, the other component is the anti-inflammatory component, and um, the final component, which I think is just as critical as all of them, is restoring barrier health. You see, when your skin is starved, and rosacea skin is starved, meaning there's so much inflammation going on that it cannot keep all of the food and the antioxidants and the lipids and the proteins and the enzymes, it cannot keep them around long enough to maintain the health of the skin, so the barrier 
which is one of the things that suffers, and the dermis, which we identified suffers by getting thinner, um, need help. So we try to increase the food supply using niacinamide, but the way that we restore the barrier is through this liposome delivery system that we're using. And that actually is proven to restore the barrier. And then of course you have retinaldehyde, which is also proven to improve the symptoms of rosacea uh, in research done in the 1990s. So with all of these things, you can see that our approach is quite unique. We're, it's, it's an all-encompassing approach. We do not believe that you know, barely putting any product on the skin or only using a moisturizer does anything long-term uh, that is positive. It simply um, gives you that, that temporary effect, if that at all, and it's really not the approach that we recommend. We hope you enjoy the strategy, but always remember, rosacea sufferers, you typically are much more sensitive to stimulants and you need to start slowly with the osmosis line. Thanks.